So watch out. It begins right now in 3, 2, 1. Hi, I'm Mike Morheim from Blizzard, and you're listening to The Instance. <laughs> The World of Warcraft podcast, so you don't have to. This is the instance. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the instance, episode 540 and 2. I'm Scott Johnson with Garrett Weinzerpel. Hello, Garrett. Hey, Scott. How you doing? I'm good, man. It's good to have you here. It's just me and you today, holding down the fart. How you feel about yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. A, a duo, a duo instance. It's yeah, a, a, a rare thing nowadays. Yeah, duos. People, people like to do them in uh, in uh, battle royales, and today we do one in the instance. Only, only one team will stand at the end, but we're the only ones, so I guess we'll stand. It'll be fun. It's rigged. We rigged it. We win. <laughs> yeah. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. We Scott. totally will. Hey, uh, welcome back, everybody. It's good to be here. Uh, what is it? December seventh. So that means we're. I mean, Christmas is like literally just like right around the effing corner, and that's great. And I hope everybody's uh... in true festive uh, <laughs> uh, effing corners. Well, you know, festive effing corners. Celebrate how you gotta and how you wanna, and uh, <laughs> get there, get there however you get there. But anyway, we're we're happy to be here. I, I assume. Let's see, next week is, we should have another one next week. I think everything's good except for maybe the week of Christmas. I don't know. It, it's still a sort of sort of being worked on, and because Christmas isn't. Uh, on a normal day this year, it's on a freaking Tuesday. What is that? That's the dumbest thing I ever heard. Uh, but whatever. <laughs> I get that. Yeah. You know, if you say it's the twenty fifth, I get it. But why can't we just say Christmas is the fourth Friday of the of the of December every year? Why can't we do that? You can't change Jesus's birthday, Scott. But he was born in April, by all historical <laughs> accounts. <laughs> don't or June don't, or something. <laughs> don't don't hit me with your facts. <laughs> Yeah, it's the pagans who what done it, as my dad would say. Yeah, it's the pagans. It's all pagans. <laughs> it's your father literally say it's the pagans what done it. Is oh, that a, he would a normal. He phrase? would always say that when we were when we were growing up. He'd go, uh, my mom would go, we got to get the tree out and decorate and stuff, and he'd go, ah, stupid pagan holiday. He'd say, and then he'd pull the tree out and put it up. That, and, those are the bumper stickers I want to see now. Everyone's yeah. got their keep Christ and Christmas bumpers yeah. stickers on right now. I want to see it's the pagans what done it. Bumper <laughs> it's stickers the pagans what done it. <laughs> All right. That's what I want on the back of your Honda Odyssey, okay? Okay. I'm in I'm into it. I like what you're selling. I'd like to buy a bag, please. All right. Hey, uh we're here. We're going to talk about stuff going on in and around uh Warcraft. There's some big stuff coming up actually before the holiday and uh at least a bunch of it. Some of it doesn't come out until January in terms of rollout of uh the the, the bigger stuff yeah. uh, if you're a raider. Yeah, if you're a raider, the things you're really looking forward to, you're going to get those a little bit later, but uh some interesting stuff coming down the pike. Some of it we knew about, a few details we didn't. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk a little bit about what happened uh, last night at the Video Game Awards. Only one Blizzard game was honored. You probably can guess which one. I don't know if you can or not. And I'm um, actually kind of anxious to get to a point in the show where uh, you can give me the, I don't know, the verdict on the latest Hearthstone expansion, whether it was any good or not, or is mm. any good mm. or not. Um, oh. So I know I, mean, I can tell you right now we were like four days in. So far, it's it's great. Great! Wow, that's a bigger word than good. That's a way bigger word. Uh, so far, it's the best thing that happened to Hearthstone all year. Really? Wow. Yeah. Okay. That's a good set, man. The cards are dope. All right. There's so many cool cards like and so many cool new archetypes already. Right. Well, all right. I like some dope, and uh, let's give people some right now with this. <laughs> Here's the straight dope on World of Warcraft. Tides of Vengeance arrives on December 11th, or at least it begins arriving then. That's this Tuesday, coming Tuesday. So the release of Tides of Vengeance opens the uh, way for a new war front. This is the battle for Darkshore, which I don't know if you saw that intro uh, cinematic, in-game cinematic thing for it. Have you seen that? Watched that? Oh, with the with, with Malfurion actually being cool? Yeah. Malfurion finally in the entire history of World of Warcraft doing something that matters. <laughs> yeah, not being tied up in a weed going, Taronda, like being such a puss. <laughs> like he is the man in this thing. Oh my gosh, he's just awesome. It changed my whole outlook on him. I played him in Heroes because I was in the mood now. Like he's just cool now. Suddenly he's cool. Yeah, but, but that's not him in Heroes. Now I want I want new Malfurion in Heroes. Yeah. I want Malfurion 2.0 where he turns into a, a bear and just like rips the 
jugulars from his enemies. Yeah, and what does he say to the dude who pushes up against the tree, the troll, and he says, what does he say? Uh, get that, get the H out of here. No, he didn't say that. He said, uh, <laughs> I'm not yelling for my uh, wife now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I did notice that at the end there, he's still sort of sheepishly behind Taronda as she's doing her business, which is fine. But anyway, it's a very cool little uh, short film thing deal. And um, it makes Malfurion way cooler than I've ever thought of him as before. And I think probably the feeling's mutual across the fandom. Uh, this is the... Yeah. I feel like they always should have handled him. And maybe it's what they were attempting to do and they've just kind of not done it that well. Like... Now I kind of get Malfurion. I feel like I never got him until this point, but he's kind of the he he's the pacifist that when you push him too far, just opens up a can and destroys you. Yeah, I, I like that, that's a good way of putting it. Opens up a can. <laughs> that's real good. I like that. <laughs> it, it just uh, I don't know. I guess I guess they just took they waited too long to have him do something cool. Uh, I mean, during the during the the War of Thorns, it was it was pretty damn sweet when the the wisp wall when he called in the wisp wall that was a really cool effect it's something we hadn't seen in the game before but even still i'm like well the wisp wall is cool malfurion's still lame he's just still standing there uh, praising the high heavens with his arms yeah but, um i really it, like uh more of this please yeah could malfurion. we have more of this like straight up like just uh in fact you know what <laughs> they spend so much time with their cinematics on a lot of works and sometimes a human or two like that's kind of where all this it feels like where all the all the the blood is spilt and some of the other not i wouldn't call them lesser heroes but some of the heroes on in the roster like malfurion just get left to the wayside or they get left to sort of janky hokey in-game stuff as you're playing not rendered out just happening while you're you know walking around and it doesn't do them any justice. This was a reminder that they, all of these heroes have the chance to be a complete badass if they just get some time. Like, imagine what they could do with a couple of freaking gnomes for once, you know? Or a goblin or two, or something. Just Oh, yeah, well, I mean, when, when Mech Torque showed up briefly in his mech suit in the, the beginning of uh, Legion mm -hmm. uh, at the Broken Shore, I was like, yes! Mech suit Mech Torque! I'm so into this! Yeah, it's really good. They need they need more of it, but yeah, this is. Uh, I mean, I like many players of World of Warcraft. The first damn thing I ever rolled was a night elf, um, and so this is this is cool because for me it's like bringing it back to the Warcraft three roots. Like when you first met the night elves, they were kind of creepy. Like yeah. you were afraid of them. They were mm -hmm. hiding in the trees. They were this insane yeah. warrior race that would come out at night and slit your throat. Yeah, and uh, that I feel like that's been lost. They kind of just became the tree hugging hippies of the. Of the of the MMO for quite a while. I agree. This is uh, this is definitely a, t a new take on that. In fact, uh, chat room. I'm going to play just a taste of this. I think this is the part where he says the words I like. So here, check it. Out. <laughs> That's so cool. We are coming. Oh my gosh, dude. He's uh, so, so good. You just reminded me of the freaking Evil Dead reference. Like all the roots coming up and just dragging that orc under the dirt. Yeah, like have you ever We're seen... Straight I Straight out of Evil Dead. I just call that his lawn when I play in Heroes. <laughs> but in this, in this thing, that is brutal. Like sucking that orc down into nothing land. It's amazing. Get yeah. on my lawn. Yeah. It's really good, you guys. Uh, go watch it if you haven't. It's called Terror of Darkshore. There's no spoilers in here. It's just a lead up to the Darkshore confrontation, which is the new Warfront coming. And you get a little also, uh, a little bit of um, uh, Nathanos, a.k.a. the Raven Lord. He's in there hanging around. I was, was going to say, a.k.a. Uh, Sylvanas' uh, <laughs> shoulder massager from yeah. last week. Dark lady. <laughs> yeah. Oh, by the way, that got a lot of comments. We got a lot of back and forth about our uh, discussion about that bit of lore and whether or not Sylvanas would, uh, you know, just turn out to be an old god trapped in her body or whatever. Uh, yeah. thanks, thanks for all those tweets and emails. They kind of cracked me up this week, but uh, I don't think we're predicting it very well. It was just fun to do it. Anyway, that's uh, awesome, and you should go check it out. But Darkshore itself, or the, excuse me, the uh, battle for Darkshore is in the ashen shadow of Teldrassil. Tel Tel so you see the big tree. 
uh, not really burning now, but just kind of big, ashy, smoky, awful edifice. One might call it a husk. One might. In fact, this one might. I'm going to call it a husk. This one will, not might. (laughs) There's no more might. I've just called it a husk. Uh, The Night Elves strike back against the Forsaken to reclaim their ancestral homeland in an all-new co-op warfront in between battles. uh, Discover what awaits in a new version of Dark Shores Zone, reshaped by the fires of war. I wonder if that means trees are getting redone, because, man, those trees are bad in that zone. Real bad. Yeah, I hope so. Um, I mean, we got the... We got the Highlands looking a lot better now. Yeah, those look good. I would um, spend time. I'd vacation in the Highlands now. <laughs> <clears throat> it's not bad. Yeah, so I'm, I'm I'm hoping that they 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 drop some new trees in there because you're right, you're right. Well, when it's, we were uh, doing the lead up to the expansion out there, um, it was just this sick reminder that those trees are 15 years old, and they you know back in the day that's all they could do. But they've gotten so much better with their Wow Tree Tech. Uh, I don't know if it's just that they've gotten better artistically to figure out a way to you know fool us into thinking it looks better and looks like real foliage, or if you know the engine just can handle more and we're further along, obviously, in what pe- people's computers can handle. I don't know, but uh, the- it's it's definitely all all of the everything you just mentioned all kind of put together. I mean, just just go go back out to the Zara lore. Look at those tree canopies. It's incredible. Oh man, don't you know what you don't want to do though? I spent some time in Sunken Temple. Whew, they got these. What the vi- hell were you doing out in Sunken Temple? I was trying to get some achievements. I don't ask; it's stupid. But <laughs> I was out there, and uh, I I went in, and they have a bunch of like growing kind of slime, slimy uh, uh, swamp vine stuff that's supposed to be kind of hanging everywhere. Yeah, it's like they reached into a really old, like N sixty four game, pulled out the textures, and just hung them to dry in this zone. Like it is the worst worst possible looking aesthetic you've ever seen we must have been okay with it no four but man it's bad so hey uh 2003 graphics steve uh does this look like spanish moss <laughs> yeah yeah it's good enough we'll just just roll with that uh 2003 graphics steve i want to know that guy <laughs> and actually, I kind of want to yell at that guy because it looks terrible. But what did he know? Like today, they That's would what do we it totally back different. In the ta- back in the day, man, yeah. I, re- I remember going to Sunken Temple for the first time, yeah, like, and finding it and being like, this, "It will never get cooler than this." Oh my god, this thing's like in the, I got to go in the water and find yep. this Aztec pyramid. Like, yeah, oh, it was really, so cool. It was really cool, and it's still kind of cool with that exception. Everything else in there looks fine. I mean, it's, yes, it's older textures and stuff like that, but. It looks fine. Still feels like I'm going into this underwater, you know, horrible tomb thing. And and then you walk around the corner. And you're like, oh, there's like four four badly rendered polygons uh, that make a vine hanging in my face. It's just really <laughs> takes you out of it. But oh hey, I th- I'm pretty sure these looked better in Jet Force Gemini. <laughs> <laughs> there's your comparison. It's pretty good. Uh, anyway, it's uh, it's good. To, it'll be good to see what they do there because I like. Uh, dark shore generally for its vibe and uh happy to be going out there again at least the one or two or three times that i get loot out of it because i don't really like uh, uh war fronts <laughs> i mean i hope I, here's what i hope we get in there and, and it just blows my mind i'm like oh now that's a war front man woo this will be where i spend all my time when it's our turn anyway and i'm gonna be there just kicking it and doing it and whatever uh, but I don't know if that's going to be the case because I really, really, very quickly got bored of the first Warfront. It just was not exciting to me at all. Uh, so do you have any expectations I, for that? Do you want it? I mean, what do you what do you hope from Darkshore? Uh, well, I'm, I mean, just from a lore aspect, I'm more interested in it because this is this is to me significantly more tied to the story of BFA than uh, anything happening out in the Highlands. Yeah, uh, it it just seemed like a I mean, I I read the book. <laughs> like I did a I did a spoiler episode with Patrick about the book yeah. about the battle that took place out there, yeah. and it still felt pretty disconnected um, from everything we had just gone through at the beginning of BFA, leveling up, going out to uh, you know either Cool uh, Tiris or or Zandalar. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just kind of felt like hitting the brakes. Um, yeah, but uh, all this lead up and then, uh, hey, where are you going? I'm going to go to Jungle Town and do a billion quests. Where are you going? I'm going to Pirateville and I'll do the same. Okay, see ya. Like it was, it was a weird, right. weird break there. I, I agree. Yeah. yeah, I don't know how. I'm, I mean, I'm, on the whole, like 
what what does feel good about this battle for Darkshore thing is that that we're moving we're finally moving this conflict forward at its core level again like back to hey it's Malfurion making a direct threat about Sylvanas and and you guys are I mean you're you got her her lieutenant right there and you got Malfurion and freaking owl lady hanging around like it's kind of a big deal or at least it feels like it my worry is I'm going to get in and go Whew, all right, well, that took forever, and that's a nice uh, uh, piece upgrade. Okay, uh, I don't know if I want to do this again. That's what I'm worried about, gameplay-wise. Yeah, I mean, I think I, I think if you had that experience at the first Warfront, you're going to have that experience here as, as well. Um, I, I Personally, I've come around on Warfronts a little bit. Yeah. Uh, like Because last week you talked about how you've, you've kind of hit the, the, the first burnout period yeah. of BFA, sure. which uh, I, I do not think you're alone, uh, and I think it's a pretty natural course and i have to to a certain degree i'm i'm enjoying the game a lot because i've finally started up my alliance tune yeah but um in terms of keeping up with my main uh in whatever form that 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 takes i actually kind of like war fronts now because i'm really over world world quests i don't want to do them anymore but i need more resources yeah <laughs> and so I keep running out and doing like my one war front a week gives me a really nice fat stack of war, re- war resources if I go out there and do the quests after the war fronts finish. Yeah, that's a so, good point. I hadn't thought about that. There's your, there's a good alternative to doing world quests all day. Yeah, in terms of just keeping up with my main, yeah. uh, I, I like that the war fronts are this efficient way. And and not obviously, it's, I'm not talking about the war front itself. I'm talking about the quests after the after the fact, but. Um, I, I like that it allows me to kind of keep up with my resources uh, and the the economy of my main tune. You don't uh, get with, any re, you get no resources in islands, right? Other than uh, Azerite, uh, and that's it, right? Am I, am I, I dislike islands so much I don't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's what's funny is I actually kind of like them. I do wish they gave more than just Azerite, and I'm excited about the changes and the two new islands. But I I don't mind them. I find them I, I find them potentially interesting because. I like the randomization. There's a little bit of, I don't know, Diablo meat being cooked there. And so it feels yeah. like there's potential there. I, I agree that they that they haven't reached it. I don't quite have the hatred you do for it, but I but I get why people aren't super satisfied with them. I just wish it gave more rewards outside of Azerite. Like some more resources there would be sweet because then I would run more of them. Uh, because I really dislike Warfronts. Almost, it's almost like I feel the way about Warfronts that you do about Islands. Uh so I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they'll do that. Maybe they'll expand. Yeah, it. I really enjoyed Islands at the beginning, um, but but now I, artifact power is just not, or Azerite power is just not a, a driving force for me. Yeah. It's, it's hard for me to get excited about it. Um, it's it's one step removed from reputation grind for me for the least interesting part of this game. Yeah, you're um, not you're not alone, by the way. Like that's where a lot of people are at with this thing. And and, and yeah, and there's a lot of I, eyeballs. I yeah. Go ahead. I wasn't hot on it in, when it was artifact power in Legion either. Right. Uh, I think the artifact was just a little more interesting uh, for for multiple reasons, but I still didn't like that this kind of unending grind for for a bigger number. Yeah, and it got out of control over there with the it got into the billions real quick, um, which yeah, started yeah. to mean nothing. But, it may as well have been zero, you know, <laughs> like yeah, billion yeah, a billion. It's, it's, to me, this is. A smaller piece of the pie i've always i've always come to this game for rating and for dungeons yeah. uh and and it's still very good in bfa in my opinion yeah <laughs> i'm still really enjoying mythics um loving the rage you missed out last week dude we finally full cleared oh man i did miss out how the everybody uh everybody wins except scott in that scenario <laughs> we <laughs> yeah so our uh our, our raid uh assembled completely through the community tab so folks from all kinds of servers not the same guild not even the same server yeah never met each other before we we finally we pulled it together oh, that's Great. awesome i think they uh I, I, that speaks to the success of the community tab a little bit like if you have if you had any questions about whether that can be a, a you know a functioning cool thing to get players together to do a thing there's your proof totally works man yeah Straight it's up. it's great dude so much to the point where i was i was was thinking about what the hell i'm going to talk about on my solo show this week i was like you know what i'm going to do a history of flex rating i I forgot how relatively new it is yeah it kind of is i remember the you know you had your limits back in the day and we were playing Yeah, it came in with siege orgrimmar we used to have to queue up for it through the dungeon finder ui yeah it was a kind of a nightmare and before that you if you didn't have your 10 or your 25 
sorry, you're not raiding. Yeah, or like, you're you're horribly crippling yourself by going in with less than ten or less than twenty five. Yeah, I feel like Flex will will one day get its due because it, it really was a a game changer for the game because it didn't really it wasn't one of those things where it said we're going to automate a thing so that uh, randos can get together easier and do a thing. It, it wasn't like uh, you know LFR. It was more like this will work across the board no matter who you're trying to get together if you're minus a person it's okay you all made it here let's go let's play you're not going to be held back by a freaking single digit number or three or four people that aren't there or whatever you still have to think about comp you still need to have the right healer to tank to dps ratios i mean do the best you can but we're not going to limit and hard gate you out because you're you know one guy got sick that night and it's great it's one of the best innovations in the game in my opinion and has, yeah, been, has been for a while it feels like it's been forever but you're right it's not that old no no i came in with siege and uh yeah. and then a year later when we got the draenor pre-patch it pretty much entered its its modern version yeah. um and so that combined with the community tab and and cross server uh all the cross server uh, improvements we've we've received like dude it's so easy to get a raid together with people that have have chosen to be in a group together which is how i prefer to raid yeah plus like you were saying earlier, you're into mythics and dungeons and raids, and that's kind of what you come to WoW for. Uh, that This makes that more possible than ever. Like, this is catered directly to you, for sure. Players yeah, like you, yeah. and that's I mean, great. it's what keeps me continuing to log in. Right. I mean, I show up first because I want to see where Warcraft goes next, story-wise. Sure. But but the reason I log in every week is is for those that, that social experience. Well, that's good. I think they'll be happy to hear that. Um, if any of them are listening, just because I think that's a, a, a much much required thing that happened to the game that a lot of people just don't talk about. We heard about Flex. It got implemented. Now it's there, and we take it for granted. Flex. It's hot. All right, let's move on. <laughs> uh, let's see. Faction Assaults. Uh, grab your friends and take part in the new Faction Assaults in Zandalar and Kul'Tiris. Defend against invaders or push deep into enemy territory for fun and great rewards. Basically, these are invasions, okay? Effectively, uh, yep. from from the last expansion. This is some catch up XP for some. This will be uh, you know reward getting grindy for others. It's just another way to do it. They pop kind of not all the time, but on, on a regular basis, uh, you get out there and t take part and walk away with whatever you gained. Um, it's invasions, so. I think that's good. This is a good stage for that sort of thing to be entered into the game. Um, feels like maybe this is them locking in on a, on a mechanic that will come uh, around this time with every expansion you get about to this phase. And now there's a thing that works like invasions being met, put into the game. Uh, that, you know, this is the new mode. Uh, welcome to it. Do you like invasions or did you? Uh, I, l I loved them. Um, yeah. Uh, the uh, I can't even remember now what the last character I, I leveled up in Legion was, but I leveled almost entirely through Invasions. Actually, it was my Warlock, which right. is now I faction swapped to Alliance, and that's down the Alliance tune I'm leveling through oh. BFA. Mm. Um, but yeah, I leveled entirely through Invasions. Um, and I, yeah, I mean, I'm, I just said that I'm pretty burnt out on World Quest, so I'm ready for some new version of that, and that's that's what uh, Faction Assaults are, is going to bring. Um, and I and I like how alive the server feels when those when those invasions popped in Legion. So many players showed up because it was, you know, funneling everyone to a similar location, and sure. uh, I'm assuming the same kind of feeling is going to uh, come about with Faction Assaults. Right. That's going to be good. I'm very excited about those as well. So I don't know what I'm going to actually do with them. Well, I have a druid I'd like to level that maybe I'll use faction assaults for that. But that's coming with this patch and should be here next And They start Tuesday, so you're going to get those right away. There's a new pet battle, battle dungeon. A reminder, there's pet, pet battles, by the way, in World of Warcraft. I don't know if you knew this, Garrett, but you can, you can <laughs> I, fight I don't think either pets. of us have ever really messed with this. No, it's not my thing at all. Like... um um, my buddy Brian Ibbett has uh, every pet you can get, or uh, he went nuts with it, like just went all the way. I don't know even what that means because I don't dig into it at all, and I don't have any. It, it means interest. he's a Pokemon master. Yeah, and he plays Pokemon Go all the time, and he buys. He's a total Pokemon head. So, so this was made for him, and he went totally nuts on it once. I don't know if he's caught up to doing what's current today because that that may have burned him out in uh, Warlords when I when I knew he was really hot on it. But anyway. Pet battles are still a thing. It's still a deal. <laughs> and uh, for those of you excited about that, you're going to get Nomergon. Marshal your menagerie and head to the halls of Nomergon to face the challenges within its new pet battle dungeon. Uh, so that's the thing you get Tuesday. 
Uh, all right, now here's my new thing. New Blood Alpha, New Dwarf Heritage Armor. They all look really good. The dwarf stuff is insane. It's awesome. Uh, 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 the Blood Elf stuff is insane and, and clearly cooler <laughs> than the dwarf armor. Okay, and I got to ask, okay, now we have to have words because here's what I, here's what I see when I see that Heritage Blood Elf armor. I see a bunch of NPCs. <laughs> so what I, I don't want to, I don't know if I want to look like an NPC in the world because that's what that stuff looks like to me. You just look like you're hanging around with the freaking Scarlet Crusade or whoever the hell they were. Not Scarlet Crusade. Uh, <laughs> they were definitely not hanging around with the Scarlet no, Crusade. What, was their, what were they called? Blood Knights? Blood, no. Damn it. The, uh, the Cinder Eye. Uh, well, maybe that. I don't know. But whatever they... <clears throat> Whatever they were, I remember running around Hellfire Citadel, and they were always parked everywhere to give you a quest or do a thing. And they all look like this heritage armor. So oh, I, nice. I'm just saying it's nice heritage armor, but they just gave us NPC armor is what it is. Oh, it, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Shattered Sun Offensive. That's, That's what I'm thinking of. I think you're 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 talking about out on uh, the the Isle of Kaldanas. Yes, Shattered Sun. Uh, it's those guys. Yeah. Yeah, when we were doing Sunwell dailies. Yeah, here chat room. Look, this picture I'm putting up. This this is um, what I'm saying. That looks like that's the heritage <laughs> armor, and it's beautiful. Don't get me wrong. Detailed, ornate, brought brought up to modern standards. Like it's a, it's wonderful. But that looks just like a dude you're supposed to go talk to and have him go greetings, and then you get click him and he says yes, please fetch me a freaking monkey butt, and I'll talk to you after. And that's a, and that's what that is. It's NPC clothes. I've always wanted my Blood Elf to look like this, though. Like, mm -hmm. I love the Blood Elf armor design, and you could find a few things in game that kind of look like it, but it's like vanilla era texture. It looks like butt. <laughs> and this looks amazing. No, you're right. I'll give you I mean, that. It, this is the point of heritage armor. I mean, right? It, it's, to, it's supposed to look like what you think of when you think of the race. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's supposed to pay homage to that. It's supposed to look like if this was on the box, <laughs> you think of an orc on the, on the cover of any of the Warcraft games, you think of an elf on the cover of any of the Warcraft games, this is what they look like. Yeah, I guess that's that's all true. And if you're into that, I say go for it. But I like the thing I like about all the other Heritage Armors so far is they all feel kind of new and unique to me, um, especially the Magar orc stuff. And I think this, this, this dwarf stuff is insane. And I don't feel like I associate that with you know quest givers but i do i do with this and i and i'll and i'll get over it and it's beautiful and it would look real good on every night elf i have which is one and um i can't wait to maybe wear it one day we'll see uh, uh, i every blood elf i have is most of the characters i have <laughs> oh that's right you're super into their dumb laugh you like it it helps I, you sleep i like night. elves oh their laugh is fantastic oh my gosh i hate it so bad they have the best laugh in the game it, heritage armor is one of the greatest things to ever to be added to this game if for no other reason than because Torin finally have giant totems hanging off their back yeah they do that's that well i guess the regular Torin haven't gotten theirs yet right no but but the, the high, high mountain torrent do have a totem, and we know that the regular torrent are getting a big ass totem as well. Yeah, I, was, I would assume so. It's one thing that's been missing from torrents since Warcraft Three is, you know, they always promise us this big freaking totem weapon. Hell, the original opening cinematic is him smashing the logo with a giant totem weapon. And yeah, it does. Yeah. They don't. Um, they don't exist. They're not in there. I just sent you a link in uh, in Discord. They've, they've shown the the OG torrent heritage armor. Oh, have I they just, shown it? I missed it. Yet. Let's see. Let's take it. The, the look totem looks fantastic. Let's take a look here, folks. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh yeah, I missed this. I don't know how I didn't see this, but I never saw it. Oh, that's that's awesome. Look that makes that. me want to roll a Torin. That's a, I'm I'm not the biggest Torin fan in the world. That's a big piece of wood, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Scott loves big wood. I love big wood. Big wood, yo. Big wood Johnson. They used to call me. That doesn't sound good. Um. All right. That looks Better than good. Big Johnson Wood. Yeah, that is exactly true. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Oh, um, uh, two new islands. So exciting! Exciting news for for Garrett. Two new islands hey, what coming. About the Bry Brycol Island, though. If you're gonna you're gonna try and get me excited about island, bringing Vrykul in there is a good way to do it. Yeah, Vicryl, more Vicryl on all fronts would be great. Uh, playable race, that'd be cool. Um, more Vicryl in my life, I'm all for that. So that's a thing. But also the changes that we heard all about at BlizzCon to the islands in terms of randomization how those islands are going to feel more dynamic like all of that excites me because i think there's a chance there to do something really cool i will agree with most people that it 
it didn't quite reach its potential or at least its ideals in its first incarnation, but I think we're going to see some cool stuff here. So, so we'll see. And having additional places to go never hurts. I always like a little new, uh, you know, background to where I'm hanging out. Uh, and then finally, uh, the raid, but you got to wait for that. Um, uh, uh, Dal- I'd never say it right. You want to say the name of the damn thing? Uh, Dazaralor. Dazaralor. Is that really what it's called? Dazaralor. I hate that name so much. I don't like it. I also don't like Rastakhan either. I hate that name. But I love Rastakhan. It's such a good name. Rastakhan. I mean, it's kind of fun to say, but it's just so on the nose. It's like, ah, Rasta Man. Look at the trolls with their talking like Jamaican guys. Like I King King Rastaman, yeah. Yeah. You know. Anyway. He's, you gotta you gotta embrace the Jafakin that. <laughs> yeah, I, I do. You can get that at Costco real cheap. You can buy it in lots of like forty eight uh, pieces. <laughs> Jafakin. I'll take a crate of uh, Jafakin. Yeah, Thank you. that sounds good. Anyway, uh, that opens alongside season two on January 22nd. So you got to wait a little while. And the usual rollout happens there. You get your normal, then your heroic, then your mythic, and then your first wing. In, uh, or actually, the first wing coincides with one of those. But anyway, the first wing for uh, LFR happens. Same same deal as always. Uh, slow rollout of that, which is all currently yeah. on the... On the uh, I think it's all on the PTR, right? People are people are testing that raid and doing stuff in there. So I never I was, go on the PTR. I don't like spoiling this stuff for myself. I don't either. Plus, I don't like doing things twice, one time broken. Do you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I'll, <laughs> yes. I'll, I'll, I'll run the raid multiple times when it's out, but running it and it's kind of broken, changing whatever state. I don't know. They need testers, and I admire anyone. Look, PTRs are needed. It's a thing across many games. We need them. We need public test realms. We need public test servers for people to go in and, and, and rip roar and figure out what's broken. I wish there was more of that so that games were released with less problems uh, because real worlds really were the only true test, test bed. So more people doing that, the better. I just can't stand it. I wish I liked doing it. I don't like doing it. So Garrett and I are not partaking, Okay. I don't know why I'm making this a big deal. It's not a big deal. <laughs> I don't think anyone's like forcing us to do it. Is, is someone leaving emails like, how dare you not play the PTR? No, it's not a big deal at all. I don't know why I'm making a one. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I'm, I'm very glad it's there because uh, I need those those raid guide videos on YouTube to be put up uh, the day that the, the raid opens up. How else am I going to learn the fights? I mean, I, I think, and by the way, I think we both have pretty high hopes for this content because I think the last one proved to be pretty strong. I think... Uh, Old Deer is good. It's- Old Deer, what? Uh, yeah, Old Deer was was great. Um, mm-hmm. After finally clearing it, I have to say, I, I think Gahoon isn't nearly as cool as a lot of the other bosses yeah. in Old Deer. But yeah. Uh, yeah, overall, I think it's a really strong raid. Desar- everything I have seen from Desar lore um, looks amazing. Yeah. Um, the whole idea of this kind of split faction raid, where you you get slightly different experiences, even if eventually you fight against all the bosses. Um, Right, it's uh, it's it's such a cool concept, and uh, we finally get to fight Jaina. So sweet. Bring yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. I'm so excited to fight Jaina. She's no longer here to help. If you know what I mean. Uh, she's she's here to uh, <laughs> uh, 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 freeze ass and chew bubble gum, and she's all out of gum. Yeah, she's all. Oh, nice, nice. Uh, they live. Ref- is late. They live. What was the name of that movie? <laughs> I mean, for me i know of it from duke nukem but oh yeah, my gosh realize. you know that from duke nukem it comes from a movie is it they live chat room help me out here hold on a second they live gum i, <laughs> I love that we have to stop and figure out the reference oh yeah there it is a they live it's a 1988 film okay. and he says here i'll play the clip i hope i won't get in trouble for this i hope Sometime. all right so he runs in He's got a gun. He's got the glasses on so you can see who's an alien or not. If you've never seen this movie, you're missing out. All right, he comes in. All right, here we go. The bank. Looks like he's going to rob it. Oh, there's bad guys in there. Uh, can't show this on the stream, guys. I'll get in trouble. Okay. <laughs> so then, okay, so they're all talking. Okay, now he goes. Here he goes. I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. <laughs> And I'm all out of bubble. <laughs> <laughs> that is not delivered nearly as awesomely as I thought it was. No, I honestly me either. And I've seen this movie like eight times, and it and it's 
kind of a letdown compared to everybody's memeing of it. It's memed way better than it actually exists in real life. But uh, anyway, Film Sack has done They Live. Yes, we have done that movie. Ages That's, ago. I'm pretty sure I listened to that. I has, haven't seen the movie, but I listened to the film. Set. Had had the most amazing, drawn out fight scene between him. Oh, I can't think of the other guy's name. He does voiceover for a lot of video games and uh, uh, Ken Burns movies. Oh, big cool black guy named. Uh, can't think of his name. Anyway, that guy, he uh <laughs> they have this fight in this uh alleyway that is unbelievably cool. Uh, Stupid. Keith David? Keith David. That's it. Keith David. I knew it was a guy with two first names. Just couldn't think of it. Keith David is one of my favorite voice actors of all time. <laughs> yeah, he's amazing. Well, see, I, then there you are. You knew it. Nice job. Keith David's in that. Keith David's in a lot of great old crap you should watch. I, I didn't think about it because I, I didn't know he was in They Live, but mm. he doesn't do any wow stuff, does he? As far as I know. He's too recognizable. It's really impossible for like if he it's it, it's to the point if you have somebody too recognizable in your in your thing, it's distracting from the character they're playing. Now, if you're Keith David, you can be a guy in Mass Effect or something or Halo or whatever, and I think you get away with it because it's like, oh yeah, of course he's playing the general. That's Keith David. But if you have him play, uh, you know, a, a, I don't know, some dude in Silver Moon, you're gonna go, wait a minute, that's Keith David. <laughs> You know, if it's just a random NPC, he could be a main character, though. Yeah, he's that's true. Fun. That's true. I, I wouldn't turn him down. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he'll always be Goliath to me. Yeah. From Gargoyles. Kevin Michael Richardson is Grimash was God awful. Really? I don't know about that. I think Grimash was. Wait. Oh, man. I so disagree. When was Grimash bad? He was. He's always sounded good to me. You're insane. Whoever that is. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, there's, uh, you know. Your normal uh, holiday time, slow downy, you know, not a lot going on except a lot of anticipation for this. So after yeah, Tuesday. it's more number number crunchy than we tend to get in the on the instance, but there are a ton of class updates yeah. coming along with this as well. Yep, um, as right changes. Your your, uh, your barrage is getting a big nerf. Scott. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna get rid of it. I'm not gonna use it anymore. <sighs> I mean, oh thank God. Yeah, I know. You guys are already <laughs> tired of me of pulling stuff I'm not supposed to pull. I just <laughs> back in the day, it used to be more focused. It was less spread. So when it's in its earliest incarnation, I think in Miss when it was just a talent uh, thing, or I can't remember what. I could have sworn in Draenor it was even worse. It might have been. I remember every time in Draenor that I had a, a hunter on that damn train dungeon. Yeah. That it was just you, you hit barrage <laughs> and you essentially pulled the whole freaking train. <laughs> yeah, that freaking train, and it would and it would go. It didn't matter about cover, so you could be <clears throat> on that train, and there's lots of cover in parts of that train fight or that train um, uh, dungeon. And if you yeah, fire it's irrelevant. It, yeah, it goes right through it. Yeah, it goes through it all and just sprays everybody and pulls them all and you're done. Yeah, no, it's uh, dumb. It's a stupid thing. But back in the mist days, I want to say that thing had like a more focused fire approach to itself. So it would do some AOE, but only in a very narrow uh, lane. So you could really control it and say, well, I'm only aiming at these people. Now it's like, I don't know how far off it's going to go and it's going off to these directions and it's also poorly <laughs> rendered. It looks kind of bad. So yeah, we... <laughs> I'm fairly certain you just have a rosy, rosy memory of it. I, I think it's always just been crap. Maybe <laughs> I've always, I've always hated. Barrage. Maybe, but you know what? Here's the problem: the game ruined Hunter AOE back in the day when they took away what was volley. it even called volley. They took away volley. It just, I don't know. Nothing since then's been any good. Multi shot is boring. It's so boring, and you're all, or you're always out of energy when you're trying to use it. So we don't have a good like lay out a thing and let it fall kind of thing anymore the way that a lot of other classes do and it's always bummed me out so i always get barrage because it makes me feel like i have a little piece of that back that's all that's the only I'm reason i a take certain it degree. i miss volley a lot i mean it was it was boring like i remember i was when i first started rating it was it was karazan yeah in bc and i was a hunter and it, you would just barrage non they're not barrage sorry you would just volley non-stop on yeah. aoe pulls yeah that's all you did right uh so what it was a little boring, but it was such a cool spell effect. No, it looked great. <laughs> Big arrows coming from the sky. A million games have stolen it since, and they all they all have it. I was playing ESO a little bit a couple weeks ago, and I my bow dude in there is dropping arrows from the sky again. Same with uh, the other. What's the other one I played? Um, oh, Guild Wars Two. I got a little hunter man in there, a little ranger guy doing that stuff. So I just miss it. They don't give us anything cool in return. They're nerfing it now. So stampede all day, baby. That's what's happening next. Stampede. I'm going to send monkeys in there. I'm going to send a bear. Probably going to be some kind of tiger behind him. Who knows? Some sort of bird in the end of it. 
Ah, oh, just animals like the zoo. Just they're gonna come barreling in there and pull the rest of the room that way. That's how we're gonna do it from now on. Sounds good. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> Bring it on, Scott. Okay, I'll see what I can do. Let's get into this. <laughs> Uh, having a little too much fun with this. All right. Let's talk about what's going on around Blizzard. Congratulations goes to Overwatch. They won the eSports Game of the Year last night at the Video Game Awards, uh, which was a pretty cool affair, by the way. I think that thing's really improved over the years. And um, Yeah, I, I didn't watch it because I thought it was going to be bad, and all of the clips I've seen from it this morning uh, look great. It looked yeah. like it was a really fun award show. Feel, I, I, I like want to go back and see if I can catch a rerun. Yeah, I feel like they're getting their crap together. And... Um, I mean, I don't know why. It just felt like it almost felt like it was more uh, impactful than E3 would be. <laughs> I, weirdly, I don't know. Maybe that's their goal in the long run is to figure out a way to make uh, you know this kind of presentation a bigger deal because they announce a ton of new games at this thing. Um, it's become more than just hey, here's a bunch of awards. And so, you know that that moment when they had all three chief executives of uh, the big three console makers on stage at once. That's kind of a big get. You don't see that at E3. You don't see that at Gamescom. Like, that's a, just a, a big, cool, crowd-rousing thing. And um, they even had Jeff Kaplan give the award for Game of the Year, which went to God of War. Uh, deservedly so, I think. That game's amazing. And uh, anyway, it was just a really cool thing. And Overwatch won for uh, Esports Game of the Year. I think that they deserve it for everything they did with uh, Overwatch League. I think they pretty much killed it with that stuff. And uh, I say well done to them. Uh, Heroes of the Storm having its Winter's Veil event kick off here shortly. It, it, it's like toy event, like yeah. 90s ass toy event. It's kind of cool. It's pretty good. The best part is Dahaka uh, because when he goes underground now, I forgot the name of the ability, but whatever it is, uh, he, he instead of just looking like he's under a pile of dirt, now he's under a pile of Legos. Just pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice, it's a nice touch. Yeah. My only complaint about this event is there just needs to be more skins. Yeah, there's only like three, right? Or three yeah, it's it's variants. a strong concept. I would like to see a lot more uh, heroes get the action figure treatment. Yeah, and the kid who does the voice in it is anyone out there familiar with Catbug? You know who Catbug is? It's a weird little no idea what character in an animated thing that. Uh, so the guy, the guy who made Adventure Time, has this other thing that was on. I think only it was web exclusive. And one of the characters in there was called Catbug. I don't know a ton about it. My daughter loves it. But anyway, that's that kid. And now you have him as an announcer. And uh, that's kind of fun. And he's all right, actually. I thought I was going to be annoyed by it, but it's actually pretty good. Oh, apparently I do know what this is. I just didn't know what it was called. Oh, yeah. What's the name of the show? I always forget. It's not Catbug. Uh, but I don't know. I just I just Googled Catbug. <laughs> Hold on. Catbug. And the show is Cat... Brave, oh, Bravest, Bravest Warriors. Warriors. There it is, yeah. He's there a, we go. He's yeah, a, we are we are in touch with the youngins. Well, I'd love me some, you know, kid directed or directed at kids animation, although I think this is even a little this may be a little adulty. I'm not sure I don't remember. But I love it all. I just there's so much of it now. It's an embarrassment of riches that I can't remember anything's names anymore. But I, I haven't been up to date on cartoons since Flapjack ended. Oh, Flapjack was great. Wasn't that it was great? Such a good show. It was oh. an amazing show. It had Pete uh, it had um Brian Doyle Murray in it, Bill Murray's brother. Was the voice of mm -hmm. uh, Captain Knuckles. Yeah, I was, love that it, show. It was so well cast. It was so well cast. It was beautiful. It was oh, such a good animation. So style. good. I feel bad when it went away. Anyway, again, again. Side note: cartoons are great. You should watch them. All right. Uh, as, uh, South Park used to say, "Cartoons kick ass." <laughs> they do kick ass. Also, South Park's pretty good right now as well. All right. Um, there's also been uh, a whole lot of freak out in Heroes of the Storm by uh, players and a lot of pros actually freaking out about yeah. the XP changes that are on the server. And uh, while I, I share some level of, well, you know, a major change coming, let's see how it goes, kind of uh, curiosity slash concern, if you want to even call it that, uh, I think the general flavor of the freakout is really weird, and I don't like it. I think it's... Uh, it's, a little, it's, it's a little much, uh, and comes across, pr across pretty uh, entitled, as, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. Um, also, like the, for, so, oh my God, into the Nexus last night played out like an investigative report. Yeah, we gave timestamps and dates <laughs> to all of the comments that led to the crescendo of uh, outcry. Yeah, and um, so the the thing that really annoys me is the the first post that 
started this snowball uh, was from Gen G's Rich, amazing player, world champion. Yeah, <laughs> maybe maybe the best. He's real good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but he he posted that in his estimation uh, that XP changes are a failure. Ninety minutes after the PTR went live. Yeah, I'm just like. <laughs> It's not enough time. You don't know. Like, would you play three games? Yeah, it's not enough time. <laughs> yeah, there's not enough time to even play enough games during that time to have, unless he had some advanced access or something. I don't think, I don't know why he'd know. What's funny about that is he came out and said that, and then there was a follow-up from his, I think it's the same guy, follow-up from his translator to confirm that he actually said that. Because a lot of people at first were like, ah, it's a translation error. He didn't say it's a failure. He said something else. And the translator came out and said, no, it's a failure. <laughs> So, <laughs> so it's a big weird deal, and then of course everybody who follows these guys and you know some of the bigger streamers and stuff that have been talking about it, because they kind of that's how they'll form their opinion, haven't actually played on the PTR. Now they're forming proxy opinions, uh, and it's just kind of snowballed. Speaking of snowballing, which is what this patch is supposed to help fix, it's literally the pat the XP changes are literally just hope. Uh, the hope is, uh, according to Blizzard is to make maps and, and games less snowball uh, prone <laughs> and and then but but the but the public opinion on it is literally snowballing. So now we need to patch human beings to be less snowbally is my thinking. Yeah, and this is what I get. So so I I am actually concerned about the the changes. Same. I am not sold. So on am that. I. I'm not so, sold either. Me either. So I I agree with the concerns. It's just the 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 level and the volume and the 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 kind of mean spiritedness of some of these things. Not I'm not talking about rich, by the way. No, uh, no, 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 no. Like no, rich's no. rich's entire statement overall is it, it's not super aggressive. Right. Um. But but a lot of the stuff on the subreddit is, and and I, I think it all goes it all goes too far. Um. I'm you know as usual seeing harassment of developers. Right. Um. And, and I don't like to see that. And I also think it detracts from having <laughs> an intelligent conversation. Yeah. Uh. About about these changes. So. Um. And there are issues you know. worth discussing. Like it's worth discussing whether this is good for the game or healthy for the game or any all of those things. And I'm I know that you know Blizzard doesn't want to make a thing that ruins it. That's not their plan. So, so just come at this with a slightly more adult attitude. And and I don't know. I just don't like to see the community do this. It just it, you you know you think of the heroes community as a as a less you know albeit smaller but a less toxic space than the other mobas that are out there, the other popular mobas. And and I always kind of prided prided myself in being a part of that community. And to see this, you're just like, oh, you guys, come on. We don't have to be like this. Like just relax for a second there's no hgc at the moment the pressure's off let's see how this goes it's on the ptr it's not even live yet like well it's it's, it's going live tuesday and and to to you know put some of the pressure back on blizzard there they put out a comment um wednesday morning after the reddit kind of exploded saying hey we spent a lot of time working on this we don't we don't put anything on the ptr that we haven't tried and tested and brought in right. masters and grandmasters and ex-pros to test a lot of time has gone into this and then they immediately followed up with, that said, we've taken into uh, consideration your feedback and there will be changes to Tuesday's patch when it goes live. And I'm like, yeah. wait a minute. So in the same breath of you telling us how much time you spend on, on creating this, you say that you're going to make some knee-jerk changes and still push it live on Tuesday? Like, yeah. to me, I don't think that helps I think the it, unrest. I agree. I think it hurts it because you're you're. it's not just simple kowtowing. You're just you're, you're making it seem like the chaos is warranted. And it's not. Right. It's just not like just let's see how it goes. I mean, we, you and I and others played this on a live stream on the floor at BlizzCon. We've played what this essentially is. I'm sure there've been changes since, but it felt not all right really. for the uh, for the four games I played. We had the occasional catapult thing in that was in. Uh, XP changes were somewhat implemented. I know it's not exactly the same, but my point is, I couldn't tell from four games what's going on and maybe some somebody is so tied into the meta such a freaking pro player so grandmaster that all he has to do is look at it and like the matrix it all forms this you know a perfect opinion in his head i just don't know how you do that so. yeah uh so if any if, if of all of the the scenting kind of uh, criticisms the one i agree with most is that there's you know we probably just need more time in testing yeah like just maybe don't push it live Tuesday. Maybe give it another week to bake. Yeah, I want, I, my guess is that it has something to do with the holidays and them trying to push people out. Or I don't know. Who same, knows? same. Uh, it's, it's, it, my my conspiracy theory is is they want it out over the holidays during yeah. the break. 
uh, yeah. so they get as many people playing it as possible for the post holiday patch for the break. Yeah, so they so they get the data. I'd be it. I'd be all right. Well. Yeah, that's what they want. This is their test data. As much as people play PTR and you get the data you want, you're never going to get the real data until it goes live. So they need to just push it live. Let's see if we have a terrible or 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 good time during the holidays and then evaluate it and figure it out and patch it and hop fix it and do whatever you got to do. Mm -hmm. Hearthstone, how's the expansion? Ra Rakistan's Rockin' Good Time, it's called. What's oh, Rastamon's, uh, Rastamon's Rumble. There you go. <laughs> Got it. Nailed it. Uh, what's your uh, What's your take? I, I'm hearing nothing but positive things from players. Yeah, it's 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 really freaking good. Again, it's only been out for four days. We don't know what the tail on this is going to look like. Um, when I at the beginning of the show, when I said it's really good, folks in chat were like, "It's always really good at the beginning." I would argue, no. Boomsday, I think, was a steaming pile of crap, mm. <laughs> like out the gate. I wow. think it's one of the worst expansions we've ever gotten for this game. Wow. That's a strong um, opinion you got there on that. Yeah, it's it was so boring. It didn't it did so little for the game, yeah. uh, and they took so long to enact really obvious changes that uh, I I think they they screwed the pooch mm. on Boomsday. Wow. Um, but I think Rastakhan, uh, so far is incredible. Wow. Jeez, I've never heard you talk about it like this before. This is insane. Do you think this is the best content update they've done since ever, or do you? Where would you put uh, it? That, that, that I, I refuse to answer that in four days. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but uh, it's it's a really strong launch. Um, it's 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 a very very strong launch. The, uh, the a lot of a lot of new archetypes uh, have popped up like on day one that seem like they're going to have staying power. Yeah. Um, and that's really exciting. Uh, while at the same time, some old staples are still working. Your odd rogues, your odd paladins, like people who are still trying to cannibalize on people learning new decks. They're climbing. It's still working. So yeah. it hasn't completely upset the apple cart. But uh, my my initial impression is I love this expansion. Well, very nice. Did you know I upset an apple cart for real once? Let me tell you the story real fast. <laughs> were you uh, were, were you in an Indiana Jones S chase scene? <laughs> no, I was in a... <laughs> I was in a like Mississippi State Fair things forever ago. I don't even remember what it was, but we were at some kind of fair or swap meet or something. And there was some local farmers and stuff that were there selling stuff. And there's a big apple cart, and it was one of those where it's like wheels in the back, a tiny little stick in the front, and it's when an he, actual apple cart. Yeah, it was an ap actual apple cart. They had, I may have had other fruit, but it was mainly apples. And it was this little stick in the front, and you would remove that stick and then attach it to your truck and drive out of there. But while it was sitting there in, in sales mode, it would have this little stick. And I was riding through there on a bike too fast, and I clipped the stick, and it flipped, and all the all the apples fell out. It was very embarrassing. <laughs> so I've actually upset an apple cart for real. Like, that old idiom is, is it, it part is of my life. It is not just an idiom for you. It is a piece of history. <laughs> yeah, it's an idiot for me is what it is. <laughs> hey, uh, also Diablo, uh, they have a, actually a huge patch coming with gigantic buffs to just about everything, everybody, all the sets. Uh, big, big, I'm not going to get into the details, but big, big patch. And I have been playing Diablo hard since I got back from BlizzCon, and I still don't know why, except all that Diablo talk and all that negativity somehow drove me to go, you know what's fun? Diablo 3 is still really fun. I'm going to go play that a lot. And I have been. I've been knocking out riffs every day and greater riffs. And just jacking my character up and dropping those Paragon points and just playing that end game like there's no tomorrow. So <laughs> I don't know why or what the deal is, but that's what's going on with me. And I am very excited about this patch. There is some like stuff coming to Wizards in particular that is just insane. Uh, all kinds of like huge boosts. Like one of these, I forgot what one of the stats was. I still have it out here. I might. No, I moved it. Uh, but it basically was like. Something that's currently at like a um, a thousand uh, damage points for something is like fifty eight hundred now, and they're all like that. Everything's just like rah, rah, rah. I don't know why they're not adding new um, uh, new torment levels. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if you're just gonna be complete completely OP at some point at uh, torment ten, just knocking out your stuff. But anyway, I'm excited about it. I don't know if the rest of the world cares, but I'm I'm looking forward to that piece of content dropping. That may be Tuesday as well. So we'll see. And that's what's happening around the world of Blizzard. Let's quickly do one of these because why the heck not? Hear ye, hear ye. Why, it's the town crier. <laughs> 
Town Crier. Time to read your emails. Well, today it's just an email, so no plural here. Uh, you can send your emails to theinstance at gmail.com. Peter wrote in. His name is Peter. Uh, oh, I have, a, I have a thing for him. Hold on. Hey, Peter, when you're, here, when you're listening to the show, this is for you, buddy. Hold on. Here it is. Uh, it's about Peter. Yeah, this email's about Peter. <laughs> I'm not sure that was that was worth the you wait. Think it was worth it. It's probably not worth it. It's <laughs> it's the only uh, sound file I have in my entire library that has the name Peter in it, and and it just made me think of it. It's about Peter. All right, here here's your here's your email, Peter. Uh, hi, instance team. I'm a new listener, roughly just before the release of BFA, to be exact. So apologies if this has been asked before. What is your overall opinion on the current class design? I unfortunately closed my subscription this week because I feel like the class diversity just isn't there. I no longer feel like a heroic paladin, but more so a tauren hiding behind his shield. What is the instance team's opinion on the recent class changes? Do you feel like your class just isn't fun anymore? Thanks for taking the time to read my question and have a great day. Sincerely, Peter. And as you can see, this... It's about Peter. ...was about Peter. So, um, I know what he's saying. I think that the game is in a... I was I was teasing John the other day about how rogues still just don't seem like rogues to me. They never well, actually haven't for a very long time. They just seem like big flamboyant, noisy, non-stealthy, uh, ridiculous, you know, uh, giant uh, daggers the size of like fa Final Fantasy weapons hanging off their pants. Like they just don't strike me as rogues anymore. And he had some good arguments back to me about why they still are. And there's lots of different kinds of rogues and that sort of thing. But how do you feel about class fantasy as it applies to, I don't know, either your warlock or your main that you play most of the time, which is your uh, demon hunter? What do you think about class and fantasy? And do you feel like it's unique anymore? Like, I, I, I really wish Peter had expanded upon his thoughts here because I don't feel like I understand why he feels this way. Mm. He just says, I no longer feel like a heroic paladin, just a torrent hunting behind his shield. And it's like, well, what was the disconnect? What was different before that is that, that doesn't exist now? Because to me, I, I think class fantasy is the best it's ever been. Right. I, I think I think Legion kicked the door down and really upped the, the class uh, uniqueness uh, and that BFA has just kind of held the line in that regard. Yeah, I don't know that much has changed either. I would agree. I think I agree with Garrett. Um, in the game's history, maybe the, maybe the heyday of every character is as unique as we're ever, we're ever going to see them was maybe vanilla because that's where you really hit the ground with all your ideas. Right. So hunt, I, I, hunters, yeah, I don't, hunters I don't were very different. Like, I mean, you may be right. It, you may be totally right. I guess what I'm saying is in the initial days, they were, they all behaved very differently. And then I think there was a period in wow's history where there was some homogenization and a lot of characters started kind of feeling redundant uh, not characters, but races. And then I think that that got largely fixed in Legion. And I would say I don't think much has changed since then. So e Legion in particular, though, because of that artifact weapon, because of the focus of, of, of your class journey, I think that's the high point of, of class fantasy being very well defined. The fact that we just all have a necklace now maybe diminishes that somewhat, but I don't think it completely destroys it. So I, I, I agree with you. No. Yeah, I, I think Legion's definitely going to be the peak for that because we had unique campaigns that were class specific. Yeah. Um, but the, if we're talking gameplay, I, I don't agree. I don't think a, a protection paladin uh, feels a damn thing like a prop warrior. Mm. Yeah, uh, I, I feel they're very different. Um, uh, like paladins, the protection paladins to me, I think have some of the coolest tanking animations in the game, and they look so different. I feel like I'm playing a crusader out of Diablo three. Yeah. Uh, whereas uh, when I'm playing a, a, a warrior, I feel like I'm freaking Leonidas murdering people with my shield. Yeah, <laughs> more of a, uh, a barbarian. On a, yeah. on a death night, I'm, I'm out there with no shield, swinging a two-hander, uh, boiling blood beneath the feet of my enemies. Like it, 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 to me, it's I'm like, yeah, I could. I, I, for the longest time, all I had multiple alts, and they were all tanks. Yeah, uh, and and I enjoyed playing all of them because they all felt different, and I feel they still do. Yeah, um, but now I'm going between a, a warlock and a and a demon hunter and cr christ man my game experience couldn't feel more different yeah i think and peter also asked this other question which is a very different one toward the end he says do you feel like your class just isn't fun anymore that's a whole different question because separating yeah. that from class fantasy those are very two two very different issues 
And I, you know, I don't know. I feel like I actually think my Hunter's more fun now than it was in Legion. I like the changes. Um, I th also think the Demon Hunter is funner now than he was in Legion. I think he was pretty fun in Legion. Um, yeah. So, so I actually, you know, I, I guess your mileage may vary. If uh, I've talked to plenty of people who were really disappointed in their usual um, uh, feral uh, druid play, and then that stuff got tweaked. I don't know how they're feeling about it now. Probably could find out, but, but um, yeah, there's dips and down points, and you know, usually people moan and, and complain and whinge a little bit when they're. Uh, particular hero choice is no longer in the top DPS charts or the best tanking, uh, you know, raid stuff or whatever. So it'll that'll fluctuate. But I don't I don't know of anybody who's just like, oh, my class is just zip, no more fun. I'm never gonna play him again. Um, I know a few shamans that feel a little a little bummed, but yeah, uh, oh, but yeah, overall, um, that's 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 why I'm like, I, I wish Peter had expanded upon why he's feeling this way because mm -hmm. I don't I don't know as and, and like you said as to you know your class being not fun anymore i'm not the best person to to ask because i've been class jumping a lot in the last two expansions yeah and you know, i used to be paladin that used to be the first thing i always leveled up and then in legion i swapped to death knight yeah but yeah. and now i'm uh now i'm a demon hunter which was like a last um, an 11th hour decision to do with my my bfa boost and uh i'm really loving it and yeah. sticking with it he's great there's nothing wrong with that guy i like mine too well, Peter, if you want to expand on uh, what we were thinking, we'd be happy to revisit this. Yeah, well, dude, tweet at, uh, tweet at us. Yeah, get us a, yeah, a tweet or an email that... It's about Peter. Oh, whoops, I did it wrong. That it's about Tweeter. <laughs> or about Peter, sorry. <laughs> oh, my Lord. All right, uh, thank you for that email. And yeah. you all out there listening to me should send us emails, theinstance at gmail.com. That's theinstance at gmail.com, which brings us to the end of another fine show. All right, before we leave, though, uh, uh, Angry Chicken, of course, full of good stuff about this uh, rap, rap, Rabscallion's hot new business uh, expansion. Uh, I think that's the name. Uh, so that's I mean, uh, the villain from the Ninja Turtles. I'm not sure you, <laughs> I'm not sure you got the name right there. I probably didn't, but tell us more about uh, where people can find that and anything else you want to mention. Yeah, the Angry Chicken, End of the Nexus, Heroes, Hearthstone, all can be found. Renemove.tv and my solo show R2T2, which you can find by searching for R2-T2, wherever podcasts can be found, where I do a lot of deep dive Warcraft talks. And uh, I'm about to put out an episode that's going to talk about the history of flex rating, why I think it's one of the best things that's ever been added to the game, uh, and then some other WoW goodies. So oh, Very nice. Very, very nice. Go check that out, amove.tv. And a uh, quick mention that um, it's kind of a silly little thing, but all of us have to do Christmas gifts this year, I think. Anybody who celebrates Christmas. Head on over to frogpants.com slash store and check out the Christmas tags I made. It's like five bucks is all. And uh, it's a little picture of Santa looking concerned at a list saying, I think this is yours. And then underneath it has, you can put your name of who it's to and from, you know, like a Christmas tag. And uh, you can put it on your gifts and give it to people. It's a cool little thing I put together if you're interested in that sort of thing. There's that and a bunch more over at uh, frogpants.com slash store including a new print I did of all my some of my not all but some of my most favorite and influential game characters or video games from years past and it's like 40 of them all on one big print you can see all the faces and go yep 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 I know who all these are and it includes uh, uh, an image of Roadhog if you're into Overwatch if you're into World of Warcraft or Heroes of the Storm it's got Thrall in there but it's very much like like angry warrior looking Thrall not his you know stupid red ball around your neck dumb cloak thrall not that one not hippie thrall uh anyway that and a bunch more i put that piece together not long ago very proud of it go check it out frogpants.com slash store if you are interested in said interest what if you're interested in said things that's what i meant to say hey that's gonna do it for the show thanks all uh everybody for being here patrick should be here maybe next week he ought to be all settled with his travel uh and uh myself and garrett oh wait when am i going out of town oh that's the week of christmas yeah next week is I'm good going nowhere yeah we're going nowhere we're going to talk about this this patch that hits tuesday uh it's time to go to town on what all mm -hmm. that is so we're going to know all of that very soon so come back and join us then the instance.net if you're looking for archives youtube versions of the show podcast links all that stuff is there instant show on twitter i'm at scott johnson garrett art for garrett and you can find more shows like this at frogpants.com. That's going to do it for us, for me, for Garrett. We'll see you next time. Have a good weekend. Bye. Hold on, that didn't work. Let me do it again.